afternoon, I'd like to call the special meeting of the BOCC to address emergency management co related to COVID-19 and local state of emergency meeting to order. Before we have the roll call, I have a memo that I'd like to read into the record. Uh, it's from Commissioner uh, Kimberly Overman. It says, Mr. Chairman, I'm unable to join today's special meeting due to an obligation that prevents any attendance. It's my attendance, I'm sorry. Please read this reason for my absence into the record. This is from Commissioner Overman. Um, now, would you please call the roll? Good afternoon, Miller. Present. Hagan? Here. Kemp? Here. Merman? Here. Smith? Here. White? Here. And is the county administrator present? Yes, here. Thank you. You have a quorum. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you very much. We're now moving to public comment. The Board of County Commissioners welcomes comments from citizens about any issue or concern. Your opinions are valued in terms of providing input to the board. However, it is required, requested at the same time when you address the board that comments are not directed personally against a board member, staff member, or a presenter, but rather directed at the issue. This provides a mutual respect between the board and the public. 20 minutes has been set aside for uh, each speaker to make his comments, and each speaker will have two minutes apiece to make their comments. Our first speaker is Jeffrey Kane. Thank you. Jeff Kane calling today to respond to some BOCC representatives and community citizens who have asked when we can end the COVID-19 emergency. It appears that Governor DeSantis is getting ready to end the state of emergency for COVID-19 as numbers continue to decline with his request from all counties for all information on COVID-19 orders and enforcement statistics that are due to be submitted. We request that the BOCC follow the governor's lead as Dr. Holt said he was going to do on the full reopening of the state to end the COVID-19 emergency and all related ordinances like the mandatory mask. Pinellas County is already taking steps to start this process. That's leadership. They are listening to their citizens who they represent. We rarely hear from the BOCC that kind of language that the citizen's voice not just be heard, but actually acted upon. We are asking to restore our constitutional freedoms to let the people choose those that want to wear a mask fine versus those that don't. Knowing the science that the cloth or surgical mask can't stop infectious diseases and viruses like COVID-19 that are only up to 0.3 microns in size, when the government agency OSHA that is responsible for workplace and public safety published their extensive research that cloth or surgical masks could only filter particles like dust and allergens of size 0.7 microns and up. That's why in 2009, during the last swine flu pandemic, they published that these masks don't work and are not certified for protecting against infectious diseases, as the warning label even says in the fine print on the cloth and surgical mask packaging that you've ordered. Only N95 masks are certified for this, which are not widely available and have health side effects like any mask. They cannot be worn for hours at a time. Masks can cause dizziness, headaches, sleepiness, and even hypoxia. For children trying to learn at school, this is a disaster. With their smaller lungs, the effects are greater and sooner. So we're asking the BOCC begin preparation like Pinellas to end this COVID emergency and mandatory mask ordinance. Is the BOCC open to be re-educated and listen to the Thank you, sir. Your, your time is up. Present. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Next speaker is Kimberly Mitchell. Hi, uh, I'm Kimberly Mitchell from Riverview, Florida. Thank you for giving me some moments of your time today. Um, I'm with a growing group called Hillsborough Freedom Coalition, and we've reached over 350 family members, and um, I'm not alone. So when I say this, we would ask that you please end the mask mandate. There has been no scientific evidence that the little pieces of fabric or even paper that people are using as masks prevent the spread of COVID. In fact, it has been shown that the masks are harmful, as the previous gentleman said, causing things such as stress, anxiety, CO2 poisoning, headaches and dizziness, sleep problems, false sense of security, rashes, acne, impaired cognition, and so on. There was a stay-at-home order that was put into place to flatten the curve, and then shortly after those crazy quarantine orders were revoked, the mandatory mask mandate was enforced for no good reason. We have 1.472 million people here in Hillsborough County, and 
last I checked, only 596 estimated deaths from COVID, which would bring that 0.04% chances of someone catching the virus and dying from the virus. And that is even a generous percent, seeing that COVID death count was greatly exaggerated when it all began due to the medical incentives and the unwise use of ventilators. On top of that, most of those who pass from COVID are elderly. And of course, I do care for the elderly and they should take the necessary precautions. But the rest of us in our county needs to stop being micromanaged. So please, please consider ending the mask mandate. Thank you. Our next speaker is Andrew Otero. Yes, good afternoon, thanks for your time. Of course, I follow on the last two speakers, so I don't need to, uh, so it's a pleasure to do so. Obviously, the, the nature of the speakers who call in uh, will, are, are well informed, they're, they have their concerned citizens, they're good parents, so I mean, that's well demonstrated. Just the first two callers alone, I barely need to say anything more. I'm certainly in, in total agreement. I'm in my early 40s, I have three children, we go out and about, uh, if anyone, just anecdotally, was going to get to COVID, it would be us, given the nature of activities and how close we are in proximity with family and friends and everything else, and we not not anything of the sort. Now, I would say that uh, to that point, we don't judge anecdotally. Um, and moreover, my opinion and my experience as a parent uh, is irrelevant because no one asked. This was never put to a vote. So I would echo what the first speaker said. Yes, it must end. Um, the, um, I was going to say, the, the strictest measures that are supposedly effective can be taken by an individual. So, for example, they could isolate themselves from work, from home, from church. All these things effectively shut down and even ruin their lives if they so wanted to. And that would be a, a decision on their own. Uh, and that would be a liberty that's good. Now, to enforce that manner of strictness and, and with collateral damage on the entire population, regardless of age, is unconstitutional to say the least, maybe even criminal. So, um, and uh, I trust that the commissioners value, as you say, the input of citizens. I hope that's the case uh, because it appears the citizens are being treated with contempt as children who cannot take charge of their own safety and health. That thinking and all the policies that flow from it must end. Bert, uh, I'm sorry, Bert, did you come? I'm a certified public accountant, licensed in Florida since 1981, a retired audit partner for a CPA firm. I've investigated fraud for 40 years. And I'm here today to inform you the big picture on the record so there's no plausible deniability. This year's coronavirus is not a plague or a pandemic. There's no ox carts with drivers yelling, bring out your dead. Follow the money. The virus hoax is cover for decades of financial crimes and current looting of trillions of dollars conjured by the Federal Reserve under the CARES Act by the same mega banks and cronies who were rewarded with trillions of dollars in 2008 for blowing up the financial system. The scamdemic is also cover for the biggest crime going on in human history, the Great Reset planned by the World Economic Forum, the Davos crowd. The usual suspects are behind it, central banks, United Nations, World Health Organization, International Monetary Fund, CIA, MasterCard, Microsoft, transnational corporations, and billionaire megalomaniacs who all seek to rule the world economically under a global totalitarian police state. Their plan is to destroy the economy, especially small businesses, and buy up their assets for pennies on the dollar. All humans will receive biometric implants for identification to track history of poisonous vaccinations and access their central bank digital currency accounts using deadly 5G technology. In this new cashless society, there will be no liberty, no privacy, no escape from debasement or taxation. All transactions will be subject to scrutiny and approval, withdrawal restrictions to prevent bank runs, and fees, negative interest rates, and bail-ins will rob savers. Corporate media hysteria and unconstitutional mandates by clueless or corrupt politicians for business and school and church closures, slave muzzles, and anti-social distancing are all part of the effort to perpetuate fear and establish a new normal of poverty, subservience, and groveling compliance. You might avoid the um, angry mob of citizens. Thank you, sir. Your time is up. Like Thank you very much, sir. Your time is up. Next speaker is uh, Kenny Wallingford.
Kenny Wallingford. My name is Kenny Wallingford, and I, yes, I'm sorry, uh, I was on mute. Uh, my name is Kenny Wallingford. I live in Thanona Sassa. And uh, I am just calling to uh, echo a lot of the uh, callers. Um, one, to have the mask mandate removed. Um, we do know the data. Uh, now, we've got a 1.4 million population in Hillsborough County. Fatality rate, 1.5%. 27 and falling infection rate. And we've got Tampa General here, one of the best hospitals in the country, trauma center hospitals, that only has to date, like right now, 24 cases of COVID. And, you know, the illness is not what we thought it was. And we have treatments and the hospitals aren't overrun. So that was the point of the whole thing. Um, shut down for a week to flatten the curve. Okay, we flattened the curve. And then now we have 24 people. Okay, it's, we're, we're done here. So um, the economic impact of this is, is, is pretty bad. I mean, you guys are getting emergency money because you've shut it down and we're, we're wearing masks. And if you relax this uh, mask mandate, just eliminate it, People are gonna go out there and shop. Like my family is not, we're hardly spending any money out because we're not gonna deal with this mask stuff. So um, I'm asking that, that you take the mask mandate away, vote today in, in favor of the people and let the people decide. If they want to wear a mask, let them wear a mask. If they wanna quarantine, let them quarantine. But let us that are healthy in this county, shop in this county of freedom and spend money you spend money, you won't need the money from the state. That's all. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Our next speaker is Diana Klein. Thank you. Well, I first want to say thank you to all you callers. Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. So many more people are speaking up. Thank you. I just echo everything everybody else said before me. And I'm calling on the BOCC to completely withdraw and rescind and allow this local state of emergency order to expire completely because the recovery rate of infected individuals as shown on the board's dashboard is over 98%, which, re which reveals that the coronavirus is nothing more than the common cold or flu infection. This tyrannical lockdown that you've had in place is destroying more lives than the coronavirus itself. You need to include in your dashboard numbers the number of deaths you're causing from suicide, isolation, and lack of oxygen from wearing a mask. The elderly are dying in increasing numbers because they haven't had any physical touch from their loved ones in six months. A nurse from Tampa General has stated off the record that there has been an increased number of miscarriages in the last six months that are not associated with COVID. As I've been out in the grocery stores and the post office, many people are confessing to me that they are afraid to speak out against the mask mandate because they fear losing their job. I also have friends on social media who are sharing how utterly heartbreaking it has been to see children getting on the school bus and they don't talk to each other because they can't hear each other. You have created and continue to create a very depressing, a very depressing environment for children that will lead to increased psychological and emotional problems that will lead to suicide. Coronavirus is simply not the threat to the masses that the mainstream media has portrayed it to be with their intentional fear mongering for the political agenda. There's an extremely low number of people who are susceptible to even getting a serious infection from it. Stop with this tyranny. Are you even listening to what the people have been telling you for the past two months? Do not renew the local state of emergency in Hillsborough County. All the stats reveal that all the numbers are at a level that do not warrant a state of emergency. At the very least, you need to modify the order to remove the mask mandate. Stop the tyranny. God's word says that when the, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Thank you very so much, ma'am. Your time is up. Grown. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mary Wells. Mary Wells, Brandon. Let's do the math for coronavirus in Hillsborough County. There are 602 deaths reported out of 40,039 cases. That's 1.5% morbidity rate and 98.5% recovery rate. Out of a population of 1,490,430, that's four ten thousandths of 1% morbidity. Remember, CDC admitted only 6% of deaths reported were without comorbidities and 90% in elderly over 55. 
it's clear this is not nearly as virulent or deadly as it was made out to be. It's evident that people who are dying are sick, previously congenitally, or by their own poor choices of eating, smoking, and lack of exercise. Yet the public at large, who work very hard, spending a lot of time and money keeping up their health, are told they have to wear a mask, even while exercising in a gym or outdoors. And, they, and then to get a vaccine of unknown, possibly very harmful side effects. Doctors motto was do no harm, but it's clear, clearly political and special interest. What happens when we wear masks? YouTube videos actually proving masks could hurt our lungs began circulating at the time of the CDC recommendations. Now it's full of debunking videos that, that they lead to other symptoms. And on the contrary, videos are removed. I saw a friend's face broke out in acne from her mask. My son inhaled the fiber from his mask at work, choked and coughed. A child cancer researcher um, says CO2, CO2 poisoning is uh, too small to, because it's a little pass right through the mask materials. And um, they said the same thing. Uh, they warned us about, uh, here's an example, HIV virus and went through condoms. And then Arthur Ashe got it without any contact. The childfoundation.org currently posts some children need extra O2 while they're active. Thank you very much, ma'am. Your time is up. Thank you very two. much. Thank you. Our last speaker is Leslie Forrester. Hi, my name is Leslie and I'm a resident of Hillsborough County. I also own a business that has been on pause since mid-March for the safety of myself and my clientele because I work in an industry that is indoors, high contact for long periods of time, and impossible to socially distance. I have personally felt the impact of COVID-19 both financially and mentally, but I will do what I need to do, pivot my life, family, and business for science and for safety. I encourage the county to continue the mask mandate and to strengthen the mitigation strategies in the future if there is a spike in cases in order to keep community spread to a minimum. Hillsborough County has seen almost 2,500 cases in the last two weeks, and we are just coming off two major events in our community, a holiday long weekend that traditionally sees family gatherings and the openings of our schools and universities. It takes three to 14 days for an exposure to grow into a viral load and become symptomatic or detectable. And we do not have a growing number of tests. We actually have less people testing now than we did in July. Not testing doesn't make the virus go away. It just forces it into the shadows to grow undetected. 12.8% of people being tested for the first time here in Hillsborough County are positive. We have plateaued sort of, at a rate of new cases higher than it was during the April shelter in place. And I encourage you to set benchmarks ahead of time to show what steps you will take if and when case counts and deaths move higher again. Perhaps if a rate of X will trigger a bar and indoor dining shutdown and Y or Z percentage will trigger a new shelter in place, then people will be more accepting of the easier indoor masking orders and social distancing will become more palatable. This may be the relatively calm period before the storm. Don't lose your nerve. Follow science and Thank you very much, ma'am. Your time is up. We appreciate it. Thank you. Community. That was our last speaker. Thank all of the speakers for showing up today. Uh, Mr. Dudley, Tim Dudley, Emergency Management Update. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, Hillsborough County teams and collection sites have conducted over 106,000 tests to date. Uh, we continue to see a low demand for testing. Uh, last week, Hillsborough County averaged 354 daily test collections, down 19% from the previous week. We continue to evaluate the county's testing site locations and proper right sizing to meet the demand with the community. Uh, this weekend will be the final weekend for public testing at the town and country site. I would like to thank our partners at the Tampa Family Health Center uh, who sponsored that site for their continued support. Hillsborough County will also draw down our testing sites at the Sun City mm -hmm. and South Shore location next week, ending on September 26, in order to allow the County Resource Center 
and clinic at the South Shore location to come back online by October 1st. Uh, logistics, we have no PPE or testing kit shortages at this time. We have five guests in our isolation site. Uh, before um, I give you an update mm -hmm. on Hurricane Sally, um, I'll pause here for any questions on the collection sites. I see no questions, Mr. Dudley, so you may continue, sir. A uh, quick update. Task Force 3 Swift Water Rescue Team was sent to support the Panhandle in response to Hurricane Sally. Um, that consisted of about 35 to 40 people from Hillsborough County and the surrounding counties. Uh, Hillsborough County also provided two generators per state request to support Hurricane Sally operations. This concludes my EM update for today. Thank you, Mr. Dudley. Appreciate all the work that you do and everything that you and your staff are doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Public, you're quite welcome, sir. Public health update, Dr. Holt. Um, yes, sir. Good afternoon, Chairman Miller and Commissioners. This is Dr. Doug Holt, uh, Florida Department of Health, Hillsborough County. Today, we will review our epi and hospital data. I'll share my observations, and then Mr. Wagner will provide the details. Um, Mr. Rag Wagner, first slide, please. Okay, um, as you can see, our case rate per 100,000 over a seven day period is now 76. It is down from 83 over last week, so we are inching closer to the yellow zone. Uh, we did have 236 cases reported today, so we are over 40,000 uh, for total cases. Um, and during this past week, we did have a day where uh, a single lab reported many uh, delayed reporting of past previouses. But overall, uh, while our 14-day rolling average has decreased over 20%, our seven-day is flattening out, and as is our positivity rate, which was 6% over seven days, is now 5%. You'll see our hospital admissions are low, census is down, uh, and our occupancy uh, is um, uh, uh, essentially the hospitals are sort of running in their normal operation for this time of year. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this shows us over time where we were, you know, and basically how we get got to where we are. Uh, so looking left to the right, you'll see that uh, we, uh, in the late June, uh, into July, we had a dramatic upslope. We peaked for most of July. And now we've uh, seen a more gradual decrease. I mean, if you look at the far right, you can see uh, we did see that little spike uh, earlier part of the week. Um, but the last few days, it's uh, hopefully this is not a U curve, and we will see that begin to both flatten and decline. But essentially, as you can see, we're basically flat. Uh, next slide, please. Regionally, uh, Polk County has shown some decrease, uh, but the rest of us uh, essentially are flat, minor fluctuations over um, uh, over this past seven days. Um, comparatively, our uh, positivity rate is uh, has dropped to from like uh, six to five, as I mentioned. Everyone else is uh, around three percent on a seven-day average, um, and Polk is now at six. Um, and so my final con uh, comments that you'll see on the dashboard uh, are that as we look at the trends in our school age, again, the 15 to 19 and the 20 to 24 age group will show uh, a higher both uh, number of cases and rate per 100,000 of that population um, uh, than the rest of the uh, general public. Uh, but uh, we, we're looking very closely at this, uh, and if you look at the really the 18, 18 to nineteen year old in our uh, group, our fifteen to um, nineteen. So if you look at the older part of the ages, a significant number of, that makes up a significant number of that fifteen to nineteen, and they really are more associated with our college age. So we may be 
changing some of that a little bit going forward. But the impression here that I want to leave us with is our K to 12s, uh, we haven't seen much of an increase from that group, but we are seeing some older um, increases in our older, particularly in the college group. So finalizing um, summary, we are flat. Well, we remain on the border of our yellow, so that's still a substantial community-based transmission with risk of exposures occurring and, and some rapid increased risk. Uh, we are three weeks beyond our K-12 opening, uh, and to date, as I mentioned, um, haven't seen a, a significant increase in that population or cases associated with them for that matter. Um, uh, we, are, we saw a small amount, we're in the early pages of our Labor Day gatherings um, that might be uh, coming up, but our university and colleges are still um, uh, noting some increase. So I would ask the public to continue to do what we've been doing uh, to avoid both individually getting infected or infecting others. And um, uh, I really, um, again, emphasize that no matter what happens with our ordinances, masks do work and they should be continued to used into definitely until we can get beyond um, this period and our vaccine is widely available. With that, Mr. Wagner, can you walk through the- Dr. Hope, um, Dr. Hope before you leave, um, maybe I missed this. What is the 14-day positivity rate for Hillsborough County right now? Uh, our 14-day positivity rate is now 6 point, um, I'm sorry, uh, I've got it right. <laughs> I should know it, but 6.71, sir. Okay, and do you know what the positivity rate is for pediatrics? Uh, yeah, yeah um, good, good point, sir. Um, yes, looking at that, uh, I, I don't have the 14-day. A seven-day is around 9%. Um, uh, that has decreased over the last uh, seven days ago when we presented, it was around 12%. So we've seen a slight decrease uh, and that's based on a zero to 17 age group, which is the data I have from the health department. And I'll stop okay. there. And that's seven days. And what is the seven day positivity rate again? For the zero to 17 is 9%. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Wagner. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, Commissioner Kemp, you recognize. Thank you. Um, I just had a, um, a, a couple questions also, uh, somewhat on the vein of um, Commissioner Miller, but um, with this six, uh, I thought you said 6.71 positivity rate, but then the chart here says 6.27. It was 6.71 last week, Commissioner. So it's just, uh -huh. it's just a week behind. So it's just 6.27 as of the update on Sunday. Uh, for the week ending uh, September 13th is when the update occurs. This this chart only updates once a week. I see. Okay, I was a little concerned about the discrepancy. I also want to ask a couple other questions. The um, last speaker um, said, and I thought she was talking about Hillsborough County. Um, she said that our it's 12.8 percent for first time positive uh, is. Can you explain if that's true, and if so, how would the, what would the discrepancy be between what we consider positive and what she stated? Uh, I, this Dr. Holt, I'd have to be um, more certain of what she stated. There are a multitude of ways to look at positivity rate. Uh, con the uh, Johns Hopkins has her methodology um, state. Um, and um, I, we worked, I worked with this uh, from, with a college professor at the College of Public Health. And then there's a subset of that third category, which I think she's referring to, and that is people who have tested for the first time. Right. So that's a subset of the entire population. I don't track that number, I, so I don't, I can't comment on what the, what the actual number is, but positivity rates are, there's many ways to calculate it. I guess I'll stop there. 
Um, I also have just prior to the meeting, uh, we received all the commissioners received a document uh, where the, there was a link sent to an open letter signed by it's pages and pages and pages of um, Stanford University. I, I don't know if they're all from Stanford University, but the letter itself came from Stanford University doctors and researchers, including physicians, researchers, microbiologists, immunologists, epidemiologists, and health policy leaders. And I think it's very important for us when we hear um, all this anti-masking, and I believe, as you stated, uh, that that is what is making such a big difference, and that is the public making that difference by doing that. There are also mask mandates as well that I like to remind people that are statewide in, by governors in Texas, Mississippi, and Alabama. But some of the things they state here, and i just like your confirmation here, uh, in this open letter um, to the public urging them to continue the use of masks. They say, the use of face masks, social distancing, hand washing, and hygiene have been shown to substantially reduce the spread of COVID-19. Crowded indoor spaces are settings that significantly increase the risk of community spread of COVID. So you would, I'm, th this is, um, I'd just like to have your uh, response on that. Sure. Um the they they all they all complement each other. Uh, you certainly begin with um, distance, social distance. Um, much of it is very situationally aware. If you are indoors in a crowded space for a period of time, uh, people that are infected but asymptomatic will um, exhale the virus, and that will accumulate in a room. A mask will reduce the amount of uh, the virus for those asymptomatic people uh, uh, being into the air, and it now then becomes a dose effect. And if you have less concentration in the air, then you are not as likely to get an infectious dose when you breathe in. Hand washing is clearly uh, important for surface touching, uh, so you can avoid taking something uh, on a surface that the virus is on, uh, get it on your hands and then put it basically under your face. And I'll stop there. Uh, it also says children of all ages can be infected with COVID. While infection is less common in children than adults, serious short-term and long-term consequences of COVID-19 are increasingly described in children and young people, which is what um, we've seen here in Hillsborough County, at least under uh, from the 10 to 21 category. Correct? Um, children certainly can be infected. Uh, there, there is some speculation that they are at little less risk, but the data is cer certainly not conclusive, but there's no doubt that they can and do get infected. Um, their degree of infectivity seems to be associated with age, with the much younger ages, less than 10 say, are not at least believed to be infected, and there's been a, a small single study that suggests that. Those that are above that age seem to be comparable to adults. Um, the degree of illness, uh, they do have uh, less, they, they appear to be less, li uh, less likely to present with um, a more severe condition. But again, we are seeing those that do get sick, um, you know, can have severe infections. And I'll, I'll stop there. And I'll just share one of their last, last question. Last question. One of their last bullet points here. In contrast, encouraging herd immunity through unchecked community transmission is not a safe public health policy strategy. In fact, this approach would do the opposite, causing and they're talking about herd immunity, causing a significant increase in preventable cases, suffering and deaths, especially among vulnerable populations such as older individuals and essential workers. Commitment to science-based decision making is a fundamental obligation of public health policy. So I'll just leave it at that. We don't need any comment, but this is from an open letter signed by pages and pages of doctors from Stanford University. Commissioner Merman, you recognize. I just have a quick question, and my camera's not working, so that's why you all can't see me. Um, Dr. Holt, are we still considered a hotspot? 
Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, hotspots are generally would be for defined as uh, cases that are uh, 100 per 100,000 over seven days. We are below that. Okay. Uh, so no, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. Dr. Holt, let me ask you a question, and, and I don't mean to put you in a, a, a bad position here, but our, our neighbors in Pelos County County debating their face, mask, their face mask order. Our neighbors over in Pasco are basically doing the same thing. Um, but I think I've heard you say that the best thing for us to do in Hillsborough County is to continue to have our face mask order, am I correct? Well, um, we, we must, I, I strongly encourage us to wear masks. Okay. Uh, ordinances are a way to policy to implement that, then I, I no, do I not. Say order, I said the order, I said order, not order, order, it's order, executive yes, order. I, I would encourage people to wear masks. I, I, I never <laughs> okay, wave I got from you. that. And how do you right. accomplish that? I, I, I'm, I would be supportive. I got you, sir. All right. I didn't say I didn't say uh, a, a ordinance. I said order. That's a big difference. Big difference. Mr. Wagner. Thank you, Commissioner. Kevin Wagner, Business Analyst, Healthcare Services Department of Hillsborough County. I will present the publicly available dashboard that's on Hillsborough County's uh, website, respectfully. As indicated through the callers and Dr. Holt, today's update, we are above 40,100 total confirmed cases since the start of the pandemic, with nearly 34,000 recovered. The dashboard is again laid out to where green is in a positive direction, the pink or salmon color is areas of concern. As we are seeing on the seven day change, it is a area of a salmon color increase but as Dr. Holt indicated today, there was 240 additional cases, which would obviously increase this number. But from a trending component is why the dashboard is laid out as such. We can see the lines going down or going up. And in the last few days, the trend has gone up on the seven day count. Respectfully on the 14 day count, it is trending downward and flat. I have nothing else to say on that one. Uh, with regard to the weekly testing as received, Back in mid-August, it was 21,000 tests reported on a week to the FDOH. Through the last week's through September 12th, it was 19,400. So the trending of the reported test has gone downward, as we've stated before. Indicated on the 14-day positivity rate is 6.27%. Support Dr. Holt's statement, the hospital has capacity. Again, the trending is upward but as through appears to be normal hospitalization business. Uh, with regard to our cases per day, I always speak to the bottom chart. This is our rolling to where we were on in specific cases per day to where we currently are now from a left to right component. Again, the highlighted days are days of importance through mask orders, reopening phases, and data test collection matches. But again, the seven-day average right now is 176. The 14-day is 167. And there were 240 cases, again, today reported. Mm -hmm. Hospitalization, I will speak to this, the bottom two charts. Again, looking at the line specifically, the trend line for hospital census and emissions are continuing downward. So again, from a capacity standpoint, from a hospital standpoint, based upon the TGH data exchange, the trendings are going downward. Mm -hmm. right. Again, with regard to testing, so far to date, based upon the total tests, it's been 2.7% of the population has received COVID. A little under 97% has not been tested or not confirmed positive for COVID at the time. Our highest positivity rate was again in July, where we are in September around 6.27% and under 6% on a, a seven day look at positivity. So again, on the weekly test files, trending in the positive direction. As Dr. Holt indicated with the, the age groups, we staff will try to look at adjusting the age groups if possible. 
Uh, but again, on trending, I have no, uh, no additional items to say with regard to the age group or school age positivity. I'll stop there. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wagner. Commissioner Roman, you recognize. Okay, hand up by mistake. Okay, Mr. Dr. Holt, Mr. Wagner, I see no further questions. Thank you very much for your, your presentation today. Have a great week and stay safe. Ms. Beck, County Attorney Update. Yes, good afternoon, board members. Christine Beck, County Attorney. Um, in accordance with Florida law, we have once again provided you with a draft uh, order to extend the local state of emergency for an additional seven days. And at this time, Mr. Chair, it'd be appropriate to entertain any motions relative to that order. What's your pleasure? I'll move approval. Motion Second. by Commissioner Kemp. Second by Commissioner Smith to extend the uh, emergency order. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Miller? Yes. Hagan? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Merman? Yes. Smith? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried six to zero. Thank you. Is there any further business to come before us today? I just have any? one question. Commissioner Merman, you recognize. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just um, going back to, I think, your question to Dr. Holt. And I, I think, you know, in my mind, I've been um, thinking that, you know, we wait a couple weeks after school starts to see if there's any big spread or anything. But I, I our first meeting in October, I do think we should have a serious discussion about the mask mandate and, um, you know, if our numbers do continue to go down. I've always said I wouldn't do it until the positivity rate got to 5% and we're still not there yet, but hopefully we will be uh, in October sometime. Um, but anyway, that's my comments going forward, and I hope um, at some point we can start to have a discussion. Well, Commissioner Merman, I understand your concern and your points very well. However, um, our numbers uh, for the last couple of days have gone up. It haven't been by hundreds and hundreds, but it has continuously gone up for the last couple of days. Our positivity rate has been hanging around 6.2% for the last, what, three or four weeks. We just can't get to that 5%. Uh, and um, I think that probably the numbers, this is my personal feeling, I'm not a doctor, I only play one on TV. I think the numbers from our, well, from the Labor Day holiday is, is gonna start coming in. I'm hearing school numbers are starting to, to get higher. Uh, and we already know that our universities are having some issues. So we can, we can have that discussion uh, if the board wants to have that discussion. Um, but I am, I have been watching this thing since, I mean, since our numbers in July 16th was at average daily rate of, um, I think it was July, July 16th, we were averaging 49 new cases a day, 49. Since that time, I keep it up, it's 395 of the average. So um, we can have that discussion, but with, well, the bars open, with, the bar, with the bars opening too? Huh, I don't know. I know. We'll see. Let's we'll see. just continue to monitor it. And I want everybody to stay safe, but I think um, I think a lot, of, I get a lot of emails every day. People just want to know. They want information about what we're thinking. And it's not, um, you know, the, the people that um, come to public comment. It's just, you know, general average people. They just want to know you know, what our plans are going forward. But no, I'm not, I've always said 5% is my goal. So if we can't get there soon, you know, then we're just gonna have to stay safe, wear a mask, wash our hands, stay away from crowds and um, just be very safe. Um, yeah. Commissioner White, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This will be brief. I just want to speak out in support of Commissioner Merman, and I'd very much welcome that conversation at the uh, first COVID meeting in uh, in October, which looks like would be October 1st. Okay. Commissioner Kemp, you recognize. Thank you. I'd just like to agree with your comments, Commissioner Miller. 
um, because I think it's really important. And even if we were to achieve 5%, that's the top end of uh, what we could do, recognized or uh, stated by the World Health Organization and others. That's the high bar. Um, New York State has brought it down to 1%. <laughs> and that's a whole different story so that they could safely, uh, it, you know, um, uh, look at that. And they're not. Uh, no, the other places are not going uh, without masks. With this is still a very, very high infection, and five percent is still a very, very high infection. And it's an it's a tool that's available to everyone, and it's been obviously a very effective tool because our rates are going down. And I think there is, in my view, widespread public compliance when I'm out in the community with it. And I think that's important and important for people to know and hear because we do want to get back to a place where uh, children can safely attend schools, where businesses can open. And in order to do that, I think we have to have a way higher, a way better goal than uh, 5%. And um, it is great that the community is complying so widely because that is what is working. Okay. Commissioner White, you want to say something further? I see your hand up. No, sir, I just forgot to take my hand down. Okay. I see no hands, so therefore, everyone have a great day. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. I want to see you again on Monday. You might not want to see me, but I wouldn't mind seeing you. So uh, with that, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. We're adjourned. Have a great day. Bye. Have a good weekend. Okay. See you later, everybody.